Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 through 29. Colossians 1, 25 through 29. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Wherefore, I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which have been hidden from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest in his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, the <clears throat> warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. God bless you. You can be seated. On last week, <clears throat> we began our journey to Easter by preaching about what it means to be in Christ. And we saw that being in Christ gave us three things. We saw that being in Christ gave us, number one, proximity. We said that proximity is our location. <clears throat> we noted that our location was in Christ, in heavenly places. In fact, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Then we saw that to be in Christ meant also that we had containment. Meaning that Christ holds us. Christ supports us. And Christ keeps us. We use for our example, if one was to pour water into a container... Water would take the shape of that container. So are we in Christ. We are formed into the image of his dear son. In fact, we use for our supporting scriptures, Romans 12 and 1. Beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, present your body as a living Sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable sin. And to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed. The renewing of our mind. We went on to say, thirdly, that to be in Christ not only gave us proximity and containment, but we, we stated that to be in Christ gave us boundaries and limits. We use for our example the county lines. Nobody would be surprised to see a sign that go about 15 minutes east that says you are entering Scott County. No one would be shocked if they went about 30 minutes Amen. West to see a sign saying you're entering Hines County. 
We said that in Christ, just like a county has boundaries, so do we have boundaries. Noted that we will know that we're getting too close to the line when we start seeing certain signs. So we looked at what it means to be in Christ, but today we want to look at what it means for Christ to be in you. Now I think this is important because as we head to the cross, we must establish the fact that all of us need a working understanding of what it means to have Christ in us. Let me begin, uh, brothers and sisters, by saying that every normal human, which is almost everybody in here today, I hope, <laughs> has the same thing in them right now. We have a heart inside of us. We have a brain inside of us. We have lungs inside of us. We even have blood inside of us. We have a stomach inside of us, intestines, a liver, a spleen inside of us. All of these organs are on the inside of us. They function with purpose, but only on the inside of us. Because the Lord knew that he could not put the heart on the outside. Because the environment was too hostile. The heart wouldn't keep on beating on the outside. The Lord knew that he could not put the stomach on the outside. Well, I just leave it at that. Well, <laughs> you know why. <laughs> Imagine how we would look if these organs were on the outside. Everything has a purpose, but our internal organs have a private purpose. They work on the inside. They function for our good, but their best is on the inside. Every day of our lives, uh, we also go about putting other things on the inside of us. We take in the air that we breathe. We take in food inside of our bodies. We take in water and beverages that we drink. Some even take in medicine with their food throughout the day. We take in the sounds that we hear. We take in conversations. We take in words, music, and messages all on the inside of us. We take in the images that we see on television. Images on the computer and what we see with our eyes. We take those things on the inside of us. We even take in the smell of fresh flowers. The good sense, even the pollen, help us today. Aromas, all of these things we take in on the inside of us. There are many other interactions that are happening all the time, every day and night on the inside of us. Most of these, our brothers and sisters, are involuntary. But greater still, there are also things going on on the inside of us. For instance, inside your mind. You, the people that are close to you, can tell when there's something going on in your mind. You, you seem to be disconnected. Your mind is somewhere else. You're not, amen, attentively focused on what we're dealing with. Then there are also the emotional exchanges going on on the inside of us. When we see that you are depressed, that means that something is happening inside of you. If you're dealing with sorrow, we can see it on your face, but it's really going on on the inside of you. If you are confused, we can see it on the inside. Most hurt and pain occurs on the inside. 
So there are many components, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, at work on the inside of us. But I want to preach this morning about what it means to have Christ inside of us. Let me start by saying that Christ is not on the inside of everybody. I know you came to church this morning, but, but that don't mean that Christ is on the inside of you. In fact, you can be sitting in the church and not have Christ on the inside of you. Everybody talking about heaven. I can't get no help up in here. Ain't going. Everybody that's members of the church not don't have Christ on the inside of them. Everybody sitting in the pulpit with, with titles and elders and ministers and missionary, evangelist, deacon, mother, usher, Sunday school teacher. Everybody with all these titles don't mean they have Christ on the inside of them. Ain't God good today? Hey Amen. I didn't come to mess with your religion, but I came to tell you that there's going to be a difference when Christ come on the inside of you. Amen, somebody. There was a time when all of us live without Christ inside of us. Yeah, I know you ain't act like you always been saved, but, but, but you ain't always, help me today, you ain't always been saved. Glory to God. So Christ came on the inside. Someone said, Reverend, well, how? Did that happen in order for Christ to get on the inside? Let me start by saying you must be. You got to be. Ain't no way around it. You can't sugar dance through it. You got to be born again. B-O-N-E, born again. That which is born of the flesh. Flesh and that which is born of Spirit is spirit when you got saved. You open the door for Christ to come on the inside. And when Christ came inside of you, he brought everything he owned with him. See, see that's how I know right now that everybody don't have Christ inside of them. Uh, yeah, because when Christ come in, deacons and brothers, he bring everything he own with him. So if Christ bring everything he own, see, some, some of us, amen, we feel more comfortable shacking with Jesus. I ain't got no hip up here. Right? Some, some of us feel, y'all don't say, what, what, what's shacking, Reverend? Shacking is a living arraignment. I, I, I forgot, this is the cultured group. Shacking means you ain't married, but you're living together. That, what, that, that, yeah, I know, I know some of you say, Reverend, I never, but there's somebody up in here that's saying, how he know? Shacking mean you're living together, but you ain't married. What you mean by Reverend? What I'm saying is you want Jesus just to come by, but leave. You only want him on the weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all look guilty up in here. Yeah, you only want him to show up at the midnight hour. I don't need you after Sunday. I just need you to take care of what I need right now. I'm too heavy for y'all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring your own knapsack, Jesus. Don't bring nothing to move. You bring your suitcase. Bring your duffel bag. Bring your backpack. Because when I get through with you, I want you to hit the door. That's how some of us treat Jesus. But when you truly been born again, you want him to bring everything that he owned. I want you to move all you have on the inside of me. He brings all that he has. We don't need to be having no shacking with Jesus. 
We need to have, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, a relationship. Help me say that. Relay. Shunship. Let me just say, if they don't want to fool with you in the public, in front of others, with the light on, that's not a relationship. That's an understanding. Well, what happened in Reverend? Oh, Lord, my time, y'all. When Christ come inside, first of all, Adam, what happened is that we began something called good works. Philippians 1 and 6, for those Bible readers, it said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Christ come inside of us, uh, preachers, a good work began to take place. Now, a good work is not a bad work. J Jesus don't do bad works. He starts a good work on the inside of us. Now, some would say, Reverend, why is that? Because he's working on me while he's working in me. Something good is going on inside of me, and he's working on me at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah he's not through with me yet. Just because it hadn't come out yet don't mean that God is not finished yet. He's working on me and in me at the same time. And when he gets finished, something good is going to come out of me. I wish you'd tell somebody something good can come out the hood. It's a good work going on. Working on my thoughts. Working on my ways. Working on my mind. And it's a good work. It's a good work happening inside. Secondly, when Christ come in me, he perfects his love in me. That's 1 John 4 and 12. For those that's reading, 1 John 4 and 12 says, No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. This means that my love is not perfect. Uh, yeah, my love is sometimey. My love is unstable. Uh, in fact, we don't know how to love one another. Even the people that we thought we loved, uh, we find out later that we really didn't love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody sitting up in here has fallen in and out of love so many times that you're not even sure that you can recognize love if it bit you on the hand. Uh, yeah, but, but when Christ comes inside of you, then he perfects his love on the inside in other words what Christ does is he helped me to love my enemies he helped me to love my friends he helped me to love my spouse he showed me how to love my children he showed me how to love those that despitefully misuse me it's a love that's being perfected over and over again it's a growing love it's a loving love and it's a holy love so when you say you love me I can feel it because love reaches the heart that's what happened when Christ come inside of it so that means amen brothers and sisters that I don't need us going around here talking about we got Jesus on the inside and can't stand one another. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need us going around here talking about we got Jesus at work in our heart and we can't speak to nobody. And we go around here we act like we better than folk. Then God is not pleased if you got Christ on the inside of you. You ought to be able to love anybody. You ought to be able to love everybody. You ought to be able to reach down to the one that don't have nothing and pick them up not because you think you better than they are but you know that that could be me down 
Yes. Thirdly, when Christ come inside. Brother, from me, when Christ come inside. He bring power. Woo, good God Almighty. Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we ask or think, according to the power. Help me say power. Power that is working inside of me. My brothers and sisters, as I close this message, I didn't set my watch back on this watch. But power is a sign that something is going on Yes, on the inside. Ain't God all right? You say, Reverend, what do you mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask or think. Mm. The first time I read this passage, it hit me like a ton of bricks that the reason that God had not answered my prayers, the reason that God had not given me what I was requesting, the reason that God had withheld the windows of heaven, was because I was asking for something that was a little too low. Y'all ain't gonna help me. But as I look at this verse, I began to revamp my entire prayer life. I stopped asking God for a little bit and I started asking God for all that I can handle. Ain't God all right? I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but you came to church this morning and you've been wondering why my prayers are not being answered. I came to tell you that when you pray, you got to ask God to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask Oh, thank In other words, Reverend, somebody been praying for a job and God is trying to give you a business. Somebody been praying to save my children and God trying to save your great, 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 great grandchildren. Somebody been praying that God would give me a healing. But God is trying to make you whole. I came to preach this morning to let somebody know that when Christ come on the inside, he gonna give you power. Help me say power. We need power. But not just a little power. We need Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Jesus told his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 that ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you and you're gonna be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost part of the earth is there anybody in here that know what it means to have power the places I used to go I don't go no more the 
things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The words that came out of my mouth, they don't come out anymore because I got power. Anybody got power? Well, Reverend Harvey, what do you mean? I'm not talking about electrical power because if a thunderstorm come, it'll knock the power off. I'm not talking about water power because if the rail run dry, you won't have any water. I'm not talking about cell phone power because when you get in bad area, you lose your coverage. But I'm talking about Holy Ghost power when Christ get on the inside somebody said Reverend how will you know it let me tell you how Jeremiah said when you got power on the inside it's just like fire shut up in your bone is there anybody in here that know that you know I got power how do you know it Reverend I can feel something on the inside burning all over me and every time I hear the name Jesus my power level go a little bit higher every time somebody shout hallelujah my power level go a little bit higher every time I tell him thank you my power level keep getting higher and higher I got power fire somebody shout fire fire shut up in my I can't sit still I can't sit down cuz I got power power that's a fire all over me and on the day of Pentecost they were all together in one room and the Bible said that the Holy Ghost sat on each of them as a fire burning on the inside how in the world can I sit still when I got fire all over me and the closer I get to somebody else I rub off the fire that's on me on them fire somebody shout fire Holy Ghost power, power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead, power, I got him, somebody shout yeah, yeah. Woo, it's prayer time, it's prayer time. Everybody come to the altar now. Everybody that can, come on to the altar. I didn't finish today. But what we need, saints, is Holy Ghost power. Come on and lift your hand. Father, today, as a church, we need power fire Christ inside of us stir it up the gift the gift stir it up in our attitude stir it up in our gratitude power fire on the inside thank you thank you Fill us with your power. Fill us with your greatness. Anoint us again. Anoint us again. Jesus, we need you. 
Come on on the inside. Work a work on the inside. Work power on the inside of us. Let the river of living water flow from the inside in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Do a work now. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Fill us up now. In Jesus' name. You can return to your seat. Oh, glory. Wow. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the weakness.